Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. Now, I usually try to avoid these uh, responses to media pieces unless, you know, I, I find them particularly egregious or noteworthy. And in this case, I, I find it to be the former. So just the other day, uh, Zachary Shahan, uh, editor for Clean Technica, released an article where, you know, he finally got to test drive the Bolt EV, uh, even though it's been out available to the public for about a year and a half now. But, you know, across the country, maybe just say about a year, a little less than that. But still, you know, he's uh, he's the chief editor, I believe, of a very prominent uh EV publication, and he hadn't had the chance to test drive a Bolt EV until now. That's fine. That's interesting. But, you know, I saw the article and I thought, okay, cool. You know, Zachary Shahan, he's well known. He's a, a strong voice uh, in the EV renewable energy world. He's a strong advocate for electric vehicles. I'd love to hear his take on the Bolt EV after finally having a chance to drive it. And I was really let down by the article. Uh, and it's not that, you know, he prefers the i3 over the Bolt EV. None of that really matters. What really bothered me was the intellectual dishonesty. And it's really important for people like Zachary, who have such a strong voice, a strong following, uh, to to not misrepresent information, you know, when sharing it with the community. And in this particular case, I, I think it's it's par for the course for the Bolt EV. It's it seems to be the electric vehicle that EV advocates hate the most. I don't know why. Uh, well, I kind of know why. It probably has a lot to do with who killed the electric car and GM is out to kill the electric car industry and anything that they produce is by default bad. And I, I don't know if that's the bias uh, that Zachary was working from, but I feel like it blinded him. And the article that he released was full of factual errors. Now, he released it as an opinion piece. And look, the thing is, if, if you drive an i3 and you like it better than the Bolt EV, or you drive a Bolt EV, but you like the i3 better, it, do, it doesn't matter, right? So there are, there are things that are sort of relegated to the realm of opinion. And those would be things like driving feel and, uh, you know, the, the weight of the steering and things that aren't necessarily quantifiable or measurable. So if those are your opinions, those are your opinions, right? Uh, the Bolt EV and the i3 on a fundamental level have very different driving dynamics because the Bolt EV is a front wheel drive while the i3 is a rear wheel drive. That alone uh, changes a number of things about how the vehicle accelerates, decelerates, uh, corners, all, all sorts of aspects of the driving personality of the vehicle change just with that fundamental layout issue. And, and so it's fine if you prefer the uh, rear wheel drive aspect of the i3 over it. There's no problem with that. The issue I started to have, though, was when the information he was giving didn't match up to actual verifiable objective data and because he wasn't providing data of his own really all he was doing was using his opinion to counteract data that's easily readily available that can be reproduced on demand right so one of the first things that he talked about was the acceleration look maybe the i3 feels faster I don't know, but in objective testing, it's about a half a second slower than the Bolt EV zero to 60 miles per hour. And that's the fastest i3 versus just run of the mill stock Bolt EV. Maybe, you know, it's in performance cars, a lot of times that they'll refer to as butt dynos, right? Well, a car might feel faster to you, 
doesn't necessarily mean it is. And someone, you know, with Zachary Shahan's chops should know to run the data before sharing his opinion, right? And in this particular case, he shared incorrect information. Maybe it doesn't matter that much, but he should have verified it and he should have made sure that what his opinions were matched with the data. Another thing that he said that, you know, objectively is false is the regenerative braking. The number I've heard in terms of the I3 is a max regenerative braking force of about 0.18 Gs, which makes sense. The new Nissan Leaf with e-pedal has a regenerative braking of about 0.20 Gs. And, and I can verify that from my driving of the new Nissan Leaf that with e-pedal engage, uh, it has substantial braking force more than the Bolt EV in D. Now the Bolt EV in D though has a, a braking force of 0.19 Gs. So as measured by Motor Trends. So the Bolt EV in its lowest regenerative braking setting has more regenerative braking than the i3. Now maybe it's because the battery was too full. Maybe it's because regenerative braking wasn't fully available when Zachary tested the Bolt EV, but he should know enough about the vehicle to know when that's the case. This, it's not like the vehicle is brand new or even four or five months old. There have been a number of articles. There have been a number of reviews done on it. Again, someone with Zachary's chops should know better. Uh, and then, of course, if you actually go into L mode or if you go into using the regeneration on demand paddle that the Bolt EV has, you know, behind the steering wheel, uh, then you're then you're all the way up to as much as 0.26 G's. It's a significantly stronger regenerative braking system than what's available in the i3. Uh, so that's another one of those objective facts that he misrepresented. And then he made another comment that absolutely floored me because it just doesn't make sense. He he made the claim that the back seat in the i3 was somehow roomier than the Bolt EV. And I thought, okay, well, I know the leg room's less. So I checked and I don't know these numbers off the top of my head. So I took notes. The rear leg room in the Bolt EV is 36.5 inches. That's, you know, almost what, four and a half, five inches longer than the I threes at 31.9 inches. So again, an objective measurable stat. No, there's more leg room Then I thought, okay, well maybe he was talking about the height of the roof. Well, no, the, the headroom in the Bolt EV in the rear seat is 37.9 inches versus 37.2. So it's not that significant of a difference, but there's still, you know, a half to almost a full inch more headroom in the rear of the Bolt EV. And I thought, okay, well, maybe he's talking about width, right? Maybe he's talking about shoulder room, hip room. Well, the shoulder room in the Bolt EV is 52.8 inches, while it's only 49.2 inches in the i3. So in none of those measurements is the i3 larger than the Bolt EV. So I'm still tr struggling to figure out where he came up with this, right? So, uh, but... I almost feel like it doesn't matter. And I feel like it's important to call this out because, you know, Clean Technica has, has done a number of articles that have um, made me question how objectively they're approaching the Bold EV. And, and again, this one reads more like an opinion piece and maybe they've published something positive to counteract it, but it doesn't matter. Someone's going to read that article and then they're going to have wrong information and they could be using that information to make their buying decisions so shame on you zachary you know better you shouldn't do it and i feel like sometimes i'm the the lone voice in the wilderness here trying to say hey look things aren't exactly as people are portraying them uh you know part of the reason i do this video channel is i want to share objective data points that I gather. I might not always be right. I might observe something and mistake its reasons or why it happens, but I never do it to intentionally mislead someone else. I never do those things 
to try and put out misinformation, right? And I'll correct myself if someone brings it up or if someone points out how I've been wrong or, or things that I need to note, right? And, and I get checked all the time and I'm happy for it. You guys help me out so much in that we're not operating in a world where we have 100% access to all of the information all of the time. But in this particular case, this is well-known information that can be gathered from other sources and it's not making it into an article that's written by someone who should know, someone who should know better. Um, and, and like I said, if you, if you prefer the driving dynamics of the i3 over the Bolt EV, I, I totally get it, right? And I mean, a lot of it has to do with what you're used to and what you like driving. Sasha Annis, I was following his work with the Tesla Evora, and recently he was testing, track testing the Tesla Model 3. He and a friend noted his, his friend was able to induce the traction control going on around a track where Sasha was never able to. And they sort of de determined that it was because the friend was more used to and driving the vehicle like a front wheel drive, whereas Sasha drives it more like a rear wheel drive. So, you know, there were instances where because of that, the driving dynamic and style is so different that it can actually adjust the way the traction control responds to the driver. So if you're used to or more comfortable with a different platform, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying that. Voice your opinion and voice it strongly. It's your preference. It's how you like to drive. It's what you like to do. But be honest and objective about the information. That's really important. People are relying on you to do so. Um, and when you have a voice as well-known and as powerful as someone like Zachary Shahan, it's, it's borderline unforgivable. And so I, I don't expect anyone else to release information like this to sort of counteract or provide a counter opinion or a, a you know, counterbalance to that article. So I figured I would do it. Anyway, uh, please let me know what you think. But yeah, I think that was a very deceptive article. And I think that uh, we should be doing better as automotive journalists, as electric vehicle advocates, uh, as renewable energy advocates. We, we, we're all on the same team, or we should be. And so have your strong opinions, uh, have your strong positions, but try to make them as fact-based as possible. Anyway, um, thank you for watching.